I can't believe this is, this is the second to the last night. Time travels so fast, huh? God has been so good. It has been a huge blessing for me to be here, as I've been saying almost every night. And again, I'd like to, to greet everyone. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. What's your favorite day of the week? Sabbath. That's good. Some people will just think longer, like, uh, you have to, you're supposed to say Sabbath. <laughs> and uh, remember one time when I asked, and I'll ask this question as well to you. What sunset are you looking forward to? Oh, now you're thinking. Uh -huh. <laughs> Friday, okay. I have a confession to make. Uh, I was looking forward for the Saturday sunset before. I, a little background, my mom, <laughs> my mom, they call her Hitler. <laughs> She's quite a strong mom, uh, but uh, she passed away already. But my mom, every time the kids would somehow scare one another, they don't, they don't say, there's the police, or there's it's a ghost or something. They just yell my mom's name, and the kids are running away. <laughs> So I was a faithful kid growing up, not because I want to go to church, but because I was afraid of my mom. The Lord has mercy, my mom has no mercy. <laughs> and every single Sabbath is just like, this is a, that was a very stressful day for me. Like I was, I'll, I'll think, have I cleaned the things that I need to clean? Have I washed the things that I need to wash? And all those things were bothering me. And then, have I bought the tofu? Have I bought this? <laughs> So it was just like stress for me. I was not really looking forward for the Sabbath. Uh, don't worry, friends, this will get better. So, and one particular time, I, I remember that uh, my friends and I, I was a youth leader in the church. And by the way, our church is located at the edge of the city. So when you open my window on the left, you'll see a mall like 800 meters away. When you open my window on the right, it's like a mall 350 meters away. So we are looking forward to, for Sabbath to end. And sometimes there was even one time that uh, we gathered together near the edge of the river and we're doing a countdown. It's like New Year's, like 10, 9, 8, 7. And when it's sunset, we march to the mall and we're thinking, wow, what a sad, sad. When I look back now, what a sad thought to think about Sabbath. And I did not really realize how beautiful a Sabbath is. I know most of you here could not relate to what I'm, I'm talking about because you really look forward to Sabbath here, don't you? Yeah. Amen? amen? At least there's 15 who said amen. <laughs> <laughs> but this is one thing, our desire, that this Sabbath will be a blessed Sabbath. So before I continue on, I'd like to request those who are able once again to kneel down with me for a word of prayer. Our great God, our dear loving Heavenly Father, Lord, happy Sabbath. We give you praise and we give you thanks for giving us this beautiful gift. Not just a time that we could rest from all our worries, from all our chores, from all our cares, but a time, dear Father, that we could have an intimate day with you. Lord, I pray that may each and every heart, each and every thought be centered upon you. Help us, Lord, to receive what you would want us to receive. So, Lord, I pray that you please prepare our hearts, prepare our minds, and may you pour upon us a full measure of your spirit. Hey, Father, once again, I pray that you please move me out of the way, that I will not be seen, I will not be heard, but Jesus and Jesus alone be seen, be heard, be lifted up and exalted. Once again, dear Father, I pray that you please fill this room with your Holy Spirit. For we pray this in the loving name of your Son, Jesus, all your children say, Amen. So as I shared a while ago, I, I was a youth leader, and all the while I thought that uh, I'll be leading my group to enjoy Sabbath my own way. <laughs> I was wrong. And, uh, and one particular time, while we were, while we were meeting as, as a youth group, one of, 
of the youth member said, Brother Jem, or Kuya Jem, Kuya is an older brother, said, Kuya Jem, why not we'll have prayer and fasting? Friends, I'm not really a fan of prayer before, and especially fasting. Look at my body, and I'm thinking, fasting? I'm scared of fasting, friends. I'm thinking, what is she thinking about? And I did not blurt it out because I'm the youth leader. So I said, oh, so when do you think is the best time to do prayer and fasting? I said, next Sabbath. I'm thinking, are you crazy? Sabbath is where we had potluck. <laughs> Missing out potluck and friends. Here you could really see that it is really the Holy Spirit moving the heart of this person. Who in the right mind, especially young people, would miss potluck? And then so I just went along. Friends, I don't know what happened. Just the whole group said, yes, let's do it. And then so it happened. So friends, we prepared ourselves, and that was one of the saddest Sabbath I had. And while they were walking to the place where we were having it, we just passed the room where they're having potluck, and I was just covering my face. And while we were there, while we're reading the Bible, we're having real beautiful Bible study. We forgot about food. Friends, we tasted something better than potluck. Amen? Amen? We tasted something way better than potluck. And you know what's interesting? Because while we were doing this, and it was, it was such a blessed day, at the end of the day, one said, hey, let's do this again next week. I'm thinking, oh, another potluck missed. But then the Lord gave me a taste of how wonderful this fellowship when we spend it in the presence of God. Somehow my fear was, or my, my heart was consoled. So the next week we did it, and the next week we did it, and the next week we were doing this for nearly a year. Missing potluck every Sabbath just to have Bible study and prayer. And then one particular time, we went, we, we, we went to the river. By the way, our, our church is called Riverview. Actually, could not see the river from our church. We, you have to cross the road and walk 50 meters, and then there's the river. So while we were there at the river, we waited for the sun to set. And by the way, we wrote our, our burdens, our prayer requests, our, our sins in this piece of paper. You know young people, you do little things that are uh, quite meaningful to you. So when we look for, for some stones that, uh, that we could wrap it, that we could wrap the, the paper with, and we were planning to throw that in the river. So we're waiting and waiting, and we're singing this song when the sun was setting down. You know, Over the Sunset Mountain, a song? Over the sunset mountain, someday I'll safely go into the arms of Jesus, he who has loved me so. Over the sunset mountain, Heaven awaits for me over the sunset mountain. Jesus, my Savior, I'll see. A beautiful song, isn't it? We're singing the song over the sunset mountain. Of course, there's no mountain. There's just a mall. <laughs> so as the sun was setting behind the mall, we were preparing to throw our burdens, to throw those things that had been weighing us down in the middle of the river. And at the end of that, of that uh, what's this? of that song, he said, okay, it's time. And then we threw him all our might. And then when I turned to the person next to me, she was like crying and she was like, <laughs> and me being a nosy person, I said, why are you crying? <laughs> <laughs> I, one of my hobbies is minding other people's business. <laughs> I got it from my mom. <laughs> and, and then she told me, Be because Sabbath is over, I'm thinking, oh, cheesy. <laughs> I did not say it that time, but I was thinking that. And then later on, when I went back home, I realized if we really are looking forward to this day, if God is the best friend that we desire to spend time with, we would not want this day to end. Amen? We would not ever want this day to end. So friend, we begin to realize that, wow, this really is the gift. 
we have not been really enjoying it. And one particular Sabbath, we read this beautiful, beautiful verse from the book of Isaiah 58. If you have your Bibles with you, please open it. Isaiah 58, verses 13 and 14. We saw a different picture of this beautiful, beautiful Sabbath day, this gift. If you're there, say amen. amen. Okay, I'll read it. If thou turn thy f away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a what? A delight. The holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. And then friends, we realize, let's stop there. We realize this time that we have been using Sabbath in a wrong way. The reason why we are not experiencing this full experience, this full blessing of Sabbath is that we're trying to enjoy it our own way, using our own words, thinking our own thoughts, finding our own pleasure. Did you get this? It's like using a gadget, using an iPhone X Max. I don't have an iPhone X Max. But you're just using it for selfies and texting. You're not maximizing it. Did you get this? You're not maximizing And this is one thing that we realize. We are not maximizing the beautiful gift that God has given us. You know why? Because we have not read the manual. The reason for that is we have not read the manual. And then when we saw this, wow, if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, not doing thine own things, nor thinking thine own words, friends, and then you will call the Sabbath a delight. And then next line is, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord. Friends, the word delight, I did not really realize the meaning of this word. If I ask you, what's, What's more, happiness or joy? Joy. joy. What's, which one is higher, happiness or delight? Which one is higher, joy or delight? Joy. joy. Although I thought it's joy, listen. <laughs> listen to the, the definition. Delight, to affect with great pleasure, to please highly, to give or afford high satisfaction or joy. Next one, a high degree of pleasure. Next one, delight is a more permanent pleasure than joy. Did you get this? Delight is a more permanent pleasure than joy. And then I realized, wow, this is what God has wrapped in Sabbath. Amen? This is what God is preparing for us in Sabbath. And let's go back to verse 14. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. It says here, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth. In other, in other parts of the Bible, in Deuteronomy, it says, I will make thee the head and not the tail. Amen? Deuteronomy 28, verse 13, and it says there, thou shalt be above only and thou shalt not be beneath. Isn't that powerful? It's like a commandment. Thou shalt not be beneath. Thou shalt be above only, thou shalt not be beneath. Last 2010, uh, 2011, I went to Adventist University of the Philippines and a friend of mine, an Indian friend of mine said, Jam, you, you should hear this, this story. And I said, what story? Yeah, there was this three young Indian high school academy students who were planning to take their, like national exam. What do you call that, NSAT or LSAT? Yeah, something like that. It's in, uh, in India. And friends, uh, it was placed on a Sabbath. And they were trying to ask permission from the Commission on Higher Education and said, and the people said, no, this is a national exam. We could not give you excuses. You have to take it on that day. But these three young kids, they were praying and praying and praying together with their teacher. And somehow, these this officials were moved by the Holy Spirit and they said, okay, we'll give you a special exam, but it's not 
on another day. It's still on the same day. It will be on your sunset. At six to eight. Friends, this is a whole day exam. This is an eight hour exam. They were only given two hours to complete it. But they did not complain. They somehow went with a happy heart, joyful heart, that the Lord gave them this opportunity. And friends, have you noticed, I don't know if you have noticed when there is like a, a math quiz or a quiz B, the finalists are always Indians. <laughs> they are, they're like brilliant, huh? Like, like the top two, top three, there's always an Indian finalist there. And then my, my, my Indian friends, most of my closest friends back home are Indians. And they are brilliant. I'm thinking, what are they feeding their kids in India? I'm thinking maybe it's the curry. <laughs> and, then, and then friends, you know how big India is? Like, I came from a division, it's called Southern Asia Pacific Division. There's like 18 or 15 countries right now in that division. In India, it's just India and two little countries. And I'm thinking, whoa, they are like equivalent of 15 countries. <laughs> And my Indian friend said, Jem, India is like half of the world. <laughs> and friends, just imagine there's a lot of brilliant people there. When, when the result of the examination was released, the top three was these three Seventh-day Adventist kids. Amen. What did the Lord say? I will make you the head and not the tail. I will make you the head and not the tail. What the Lord has promised, it will come to pass. And this is one thing that we should remember. Remember the God that we learned about last Tuesday night? The God who spoke and all those stars came into existence. The same God who made this promise. The same God who spoke those words. The same God who's faithful to what he has promised. And I love, I love another story that I'd like to share with you. Uh, who among you here loves to hear choir sing? Yeah. And have you heard about the Philippine choir? Yes. Huh? There is this group of, yeah, Filipinos really love to sing. And uh, it's funny that my friend that I brought to the Philippines, he went there on, on a fest, festive day, and our neighbors rented this karaoke machine, and they don't sing inside the house, they sing outside the house, where all the neighbors could hear. <laughs> And it disturbed my friend so much. I said, Jem, I have one conclusion. You have the best and the worst singers in your country. <laughs> but this 70 Adventist singers, they're from, again, Adventist University of the Philippines. By the way, I'm not promoting AUP. I did not even graduate there. Adventist University of the Philippines, they're called AUP Singing Ambassadors. And they represented the Philippines for this world choir competition. And friends, they have been winning in in Southeast Asia, in a CN uh, World Choir. And this time, they were sent to compete in Europe, in Wales. And in this competition, in order for you to qualify, this is like a whole week of choral competition. In order for you to qualify for the World Choir, you have to win a gold. You have to win gold in, in just any category, even just one, and that will qualify you. And by the way, a year before that, they were invited and they were so confident that they will be granted a visa. Friends, they were denied of a visa, but the next year, they prayed. They said, Lord, our desire is to glorify your name. So they gathered together and they said, our only purpose for joining this is to give the highest glory to God. And friends, they were granted a visa. So now they were so happy. And when they competed throughout that week, they did not just win one gold, they won two golds. They were the only country who won two golds. So friends, they were so excited until they heard that the schedule of the world choir, the choir of the worlds, rather, was on Sabbath. Friends, and it's not just the Sabbath, it's the summer Sabbath. And when it's summer, it's a late, sunset and friends during the sabbath you know what time was the sunset it was 9 30 in the evening 9 30 and they were saying okay game over and they were so disappointed they were so frustrated they were crying they're saying 
Lord, you brought us this far just for this. We are at the edge of seeing your name glorified and just this. And then they were weeping, they were crying. And then one of them said, you know what? Our goal here is not just to win the choir of the world's trophy, the Pavarotti trophy. Our, our goal here is to glorify the name of God. And God gave us two opportunities to do that. So why are we crying about? And then they composed themselves and said, yes, we forgot. And then they said, so what are we gonna do on Sabbath because there's no Seventh-day Adventist church there? And then they said, maybe we could do a concert on Sabbath. We could do a religious concert. They said, where? I said, oh, there's in the town square, there is a church there. Since they are Sunday keeping church, Sabbath is free. <laughs> So they decided, okay, let's do that on Sabbath afternoon. So they had their Sabbath school in the place where they're staying, and they marched to that place, all decked out there. They look like they're gonna really do a concert. So they were marching in the city square, and people saw them, because this was in live telecast in the whole of Europe. And then they noticed them, oh, this this is the Philippine choir. This is the choir that is the bet, the bet to win the whole competition. So they follow them and they invited those people and the people begin to flock in this little church. So they sang, they sang the concert, they sang religious songs. And the people who were there in the audience, they listened to these beautiful songs. And after each song, they will read a verse, they will read a quote from the Spirit of Prophecy and they'll sing again. These people did not even know that they're getting a Bible study. <laughs> and at the end of, of their concert, they sang this song, The Irish Blessing. I don't know if you know this song. May the good Lord bless and keep you. It's, it's a prayer song. And while they're singing this song, the audience begin to tear up. And the leader offered a word of prayer. And after he offered a word of prayer, they all went down and shook the hands of these people. And these people were asking them, who are you kids? We have not met people like you. You are like angels that came down to this earth and blessed us. And then they talked about the God that they serve. They talked about being a Seventh-day Adventist. They talked about Jesus and they stayed there for like a few more minutes, like I think an hour, talking to these people. And friends, after that, one of them, was saying while they're walking, and this person was in tears, and he said, for the first time, I felt like this really is a ministry. <laughs> and they were singing while going back to their, to their van. Friends, that day they experienced delight. Amen. Amen? Amen? For the first time, they experienced something that they have not experienced before during Sabbath. And while they were heading back to the place, and he said, let's, let's do a, a sundown worship. Of course, it's not yet sundown. <laughs> it's an advanced sundown worship. So they stayed more. They, they talk about what they experienced. And while they were heading back to the place where they're staying, they said, you know what? The moment we arrive, the moment we arrive to our place, it's going to be sunset. Why not let's just pass by a convention center and see what's the result of the competition. Friends, a little, a little more than 9.30 when they arrived, and then when they arrived, friends, they discovered that the program has just begun. The program has been delayed and delayed and delayed. And it did not start until it was 9.30 in the evening. The moment they realized that they all broke down, they all broke down, they were crying, and they said, this is the hand of God. <laughs> Amen? Friends, this beautiful, beautiful verse, 1 Samuel 2, verse 30. I just want to get one line there. For them that honor me, will I honor. The rest was history. They won the Pavarotti Trophy. They were the world champions <laughs> for that year. And you know what's amazing? When they were going up to the stage, they were pointing to the God, and they were all in tears. They said, they know for a fact it is only God who made this happen. And you know what's the most, the craziest thing? While they were packing up their things, they forgot something. <laughs> they forgot their trophy. <laughs> and 
the friend who was telling me this, he was, he was part of that, of that choir. I actually, before I came here this week, I did a retreat for most of, for most of them who are living in the, in the U.S. right now. They're still, they're still having this, this, this group, this choir, but uh, different generations now. And he said to me, you know what, Kuya Jem? I'll forget everything, but I'll never forget what God has done for us. Isn't it amazing, friends? This is what happens, my dear friends, when God is honored. For them that honor me, I will what? I will honor. And this is one thing that we missed out. And, and especially for us, you have, you have the privilege here of, of really enjoying your Sabbath. But when you go out in the real world, you'll face the trials head on. And when we were in school before, there were a lot of my, of my friends who were Sabbath keepers who gave up their Sabbath because they, they gave in to the pressure. And I realized, friends, that when you stand up for the Lord, the Lord will stand for you. Amen? Once you stand up for Him, He will do the things that are impossible. Every difficulty, every opportunity for God to show him the glory, let him stand back and see the salvation of the Lord with you. I don't know if you have heard about the story or the, have you read about the book, One Miracle After Another? Yeah. Who among you here has read that? Please raise your hand. Oh, okay. So for those of you who have not read this, this is a treat for you tonight. For those of you who have read this, this is going to be a review. But my friend says pizza tastes the second serving, so I hope it's going to taste better. So, Pavel Goya. Who among you here knows the name Pavel Goya? Yeah, he is a wonderful speaker when it comes to prayer. If you have not read the book, I suggest you read it. You read it. Pavel Goya, he's Romanian. And during the time that he wrote this story, it was still a time that it's really strict. It's a closed country, Romania, during that time, and you could not talk about, about Bible. You could not carry a Bible with you. You could not talk about religion. So he grew up in this type of environment, and one of his challenges was really Sabbath, especially when he went to college. And in college, he has to, to undergo a military training. In their, in their military training, it's really the military who trains you. Because back home in the Philippines, we have this military training, but it's not the military who trains us. It's just the officers in the school who trains us. So this time, he was praying, Lord, it's going to be a challenge to keep the Sabbath. So I want you to, to lead me. I want you to open the doors for me to minister. And friends, wonderful things have been given to opportunities to show his, his superiors and his colleagues that God can do wonders. So every Sabbath he was excused, but then he was not satisfied and said, Lord, please give me a favor with my high-ranking officials that, I, that they may find favor in me, that we'll build a good relationship. So friends, one day while he was, while he was walking around, he heard that there was this emergency thing that they were, were meeting about. He said that there was this frame that fell to the ground and it almost hit the major. And the reason that they are having this meeting because they said they want to replace that, that frame and that is an antique. So they don't know how, how to do these things because a, a few weeks from that time, there will be a tactical inspection. And if that frame is not replaced, it will be like a huge blow to their company. So friends, while they were talking about this, Pavel somehow inserted in, in this conversation and said, hey, officers, what can I do to help you? He said, oh, if you're not a craftsman, then you could not help us. And oh, by the way, I'm a craftsman. He said, oh, so maybe you can help. So what do you need? And then so they explained what they need. And Pavel said, if you could buy this and this and this material, maybe I could make you one. And then they said, okay. So Pavel, make long story short, he made it happen and they were blown away. He said, wow, we could not find a frame like this. Even if we searched the whole Romania, you just made a, a beautiful one. And then Pavel said, and you know what? I was observing that while I was making all this stuff for, for this balance, I saw that your, 
your weapons here are just scattered and, and they don't have display cases. So if you buy me these materials, I could make a display cases, especially for, for the inspection that's about to happen. And friends, lo and behold, he made a display case and they were blown away. They said, whoa, this is awesome. You are like the answer to every problem that we had. And then they said, there's another thing. In our entranceway, there's a paving stone that got hit by a truck. Can you help us repair that? I said, yeah, maybe I can. And Pavel, make long story short again, he repaired it. And then thinking, wow, you are just like the jack of all trades. You are the answer to every need that we have here. And then while they were talking, they said, I think you are the answer to our problem in the stock room as well. We have been looking for an honest person to be in charge in the stock room and we could not find one. And the officer said, we have the guy in front of us. So they offered him that job and of course he accepted it because every Sabbath now he has a sanctuary wherein he can hide. He can worship God. But friends, his, his peace did not last long. His peace did not last long because there's one lieutenant that heard about Pavel's excuse Sabbath and he was determined to somehow give Pavel a hard time. So during the time of inspection, during the time of tactical inspection, he requested to be switched from the commanding officer of Pavel's unit and he wants to take over that unit and that Sabbath he called for everyone to fall in formation, even Pavel. So when Pavel heard about this, he was just like, oh Lord, I need you. I need to stand up for you, please help me. And I don't want to miss anything, so I'd like to read to you this, this passage. Lord, please give me the courage to honor you just as this young man did so long ago. He was referring to the, to the Hebrews, three Hebrews. Help me to stand just as tall for you once again. Pavel prayed as he contemplated the challenge before him. Today's the day. Pavel whispered to himself as he opened his eyes in the early morning darkness, slipping from his cot. He made his way across the base to the stock room. No one stirred. They were enjoying their last hours of sleep. Locking himself into his sanctuary, he spent time refreshing his mind with God's promises and prayer. He replayed the many miracles that God had already worked for him during his past few weeks in the military. God had been so kind to him so far. Surely he had a plan for this day as well. With peace in his heart and God's special presence surrounding him, he walked calmly from the stock room to meet the day. Pavel fell into step with the others as they made their way to the training grounds. Falling into formation, the young soldiers found themselves looking into the eyes of one of the hardest looking commanding officers that they had ever encountered. He had come to let them know who was in charge. Calling the soldiers to attention, he wasted no time with formalities or small talk. He had one item of significance in his agenda. It was Pavel. Positioning himself directly in front of him, he began screaming and yelling with such less dignity than his rank suggested. I checked with your other lieutenants. Each of them admitted that you had not worked a single Saturday since your arrival in, that, in this garrison. Goya, you're either going to work or to go to prison. I will make sure of it if it's the last thing I do. Making you work on Saturday is going to be the goal of my life. Such a high goal, isn't it? <laughs> it says here, I'm going to make an example of you that will not soon be forgotten. And as, as you rot in prison, I will be promoted to major. The lieutenant screamed like a madman. The officer's demeanor continued to deteriorate with each determined threat. His whole body began to convulse as he stamped his feet up and down. The young soldiers looked on wide-eyed at, at the officer as he continued his tirade. I'm presently the informant for the Secret Service Police. I intend to make you the object of my next promotion. I plan to work for the national security and I'm not about to let you stand in my way. You've made a mockery of this country and the military for the last time. Goya, one step forward. The officer screamed shrilly in tones that made him nearly unintelligible. Pavel. Taking one step in front of the other soldiers. 
Now, dig a foxhole. The determined lieutenant ordered, Sir, please understand that my conscience will not allow me to work on Saturday. I obeyed your orders to come to the training, to the training site with the other soldiers, but I'm not going to participate today. Today belongs to God, and I'm not going to do it, Pavel replied unflinchingly. You say in the presence of all these soldiers as witnesses that you're not going to obey my orders? The lieutenant screamed with bulging eyes, which appeared that they would burst at any moment. What I'm saying is that it's Saturday, and, and I'm not going to dig a hole, and I'm not going to participate in the training. Pavel replied, standing his ground. Disobeying my direct orders, direct command in peacetime means 7 to 14 years in prison. And during wartime, it's 15 years to execution on the spot. Do you still refuse to obey to obey me in front of all these soldiers? Friends, his freedom, his life was on the line. He stood his ground. Sometimes, it's not even our freedom that is not on the line. But it's easy for us to give in. Sometimes it's just, it's just our reputation. Sometimes it's just our face. <laughs> but we give in. Listen to this. The lieutenant screamed in an unimaginable rage. Sir, you can make that happen if you choose. But it's Saturday and my conscience will not allow me to work. Pavel calmly stated. The lieutenant lost all semblance of sanity. He began to foam at the mouth as he shouted. Have you seen those people who are so angry? Sometimes they're foaming like an icing on the side. This is what's happening in this lieutenant. I lost my... <laughs> and he says here, lost all semblance of, of sanity as he shouted, ranted, and raved, leaping while leaping loud, wildly in the air. Every soldier stood motionless as he observed this, the officer's display of rage and insanity, leaving the soldiers to themselves. The lieutenant st stomped to the palace headquarters more like a spewing volcano than a, sol than a dignified soldier. In a state of shock and afraid to move, the soldiers stood motionless for some time, unsure what they were expected to do. After a few minutes, they fell out of formation and began to walk back to the barracks to wait for further orders. Without anyone daring to walk next to the object of the morning's rage, Pavel made his way to the stockroom, locking himself in the solace of his sanctuary. He prayed as the officers convened an emergency meeting an event, emergency session to decide his fate. The timing for Pavel's hearing couldn't have been worse. With the general's arrival just moments before the meeting began, the officers could be observed leaving their post in every part of the garrison to participate in this hearing. The session began with the lieutenant's dramatic reenactment of the morning's showdown between him and the defiant soldier. At the end of his graphic portrayal, he insisted that the lengthiest prison sentence possible be immediately imposed. With the general present, the presiding officer deferred his position as officiator. Now, one of the highest military officials of the nation sat in the seat of judgment. What chance would any young soldier stand against these odds? His doom appeared to be inevitable. After listening to the charges and brief discussion, the general requested further details concerning the soldier in question. Is he a religious person? He asked. Yes, he is a Seventh-day Adventist. One of the officers replied. Is he preaching or passing out religious propaganda to the other man? No, but his example was the same effect. Does he drink or get into fights with the other man? No, he doesn't drink and never has had any problems with any other soldiers. Does he come back from his passage to the city on time? He's always on time and usually returns a little early. Another officer responded. Then what is he doing that is so intolerable? Demanded the general. He refuses to work on Saturdays. The lieutenant emphatically accused. I have heard all of that. But what else has he done? I would like to know more about who he is. Before deciding his case, the general continued. Did you see all these display cases in the palace museum? He designed and built all of them. He also repaired the valance above the window above you when it fell to the floor a few weeks ago. 
He is also the one who beautifully repaired the paving stones in the entrance way. Another officer explained, Another consideration worthy of mention would be his responsibilities in the stockroom. Since he has taken charge of it, not one item has been missing, he added. And you want to ruin his life? The general asked in astonishment, looking around the room at the other officers, I wish all our soldiers were like him. The military is obviously a better institution with his contributions. The general added with irritation in his voice. Turning to face the accusing lieutenant, he said with a bit of indignation of his own, Leave him alone! If you touch this soldier, you will be in direct disregard of my orders, and I guarantee you, you will lose your job. If you have nothing more on the agenda, I've heard enough. This case is closed. Amen? Amen. The general stood and walked deliberately from the room, casting a final glance in the direction of the completely subdued lieutenant. Friends, I could picture the, the general like... <laughs> And then it says here, Pavel, open the door. It's me, a voice requested from the outside of the stockroom. Recognizing the voice of an officer who had treated him kindly from the beginning, Pavel opened the door. Looking intently into Pavel's face, the officer said, Be honest with me. You know, Christians are not supposed to lie. You can tell me and I will keep it as a secret. Do you have friends in the government? No, I don't know anyone in the government. Are you a friend of the general then? No, I've never met him, Pavel assured him. Well then, there really is a God after all. The general just ordered every officer in this garrison to leave you alone. This is unheard of in a communist country. He said visibly shaken. Word for word, he recounted to Pavel the proceedings that had just taken place. I would never have believed it had I not seen it with mine own eyes, he said as he walked out the door. Another knock at the door interrupted Pavel's prayers of thanksgiving and praise. It was a surgeon who had also been friendly to him. He began just as the previous officer had, wondering if Pavel had connections in the government or he was personally acquainted with the general. The surgeon also left the same conviction with the same conviction. There must indeed be a God. Amen. Friends, every impossibility that we face is an opportunity for God to prove Himself strong. Amen? Amen? The reason why God is not showing up because we make the solution that we should not make. All He asks you to do is to stand for the right. All He's asking you to do is believe His word. Trust Him and He will show you that He is God. Friends, let us continue. From the moment on, from that moment on, every officer on the base knew who Pavel was. And they went out of their way to make sure that they treated him in a way that would please the general. <laughs> Perhaps a good word from Pavel would net them a promotion. <laughs> With a smile, his commanding officers told him that he was free to go to the city every Saturday, but to make sure he wore civilian clothes to avoid any possible controversy. He was also given a free officer's pass for the train, enabling him to go home for a visit any weekend he desired. The issue pass came also with the hopes that he would call the general and let him know how well they had treated his personal friend. <laughs> Pavel couldn't, couldn't help smiling at the providence of God. The other soldiers received only three passes for home leave for the entire nine months, and they had to pay the train, the, the train fare. The fact that God was Pavel's defender was known to all. The general knowledge proved to be very beneficial. Every other soldier in the barracks had repeatedly suffered the theft of personal belongings and special food items sent from home. Because of the fear of retribution from Pavel's God, his things were never touched. <laughs> It simply was not worth the risk. It was much safer to steal from those without a God. <laughs> Truly, his nine months in the army were, were blessed in unimaginable ways. He won the favor of nearly all. Even the madman lieutenant softened over time. Amen. Friends, isn't this amazing? 
If you want to see the hand of God working, then let Him. Stay true to His command. Be obedient to every command that He gives. And let Him do His work. Amen? I love this beautiful verse from Deuteronomy 28, verse, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all His commandments, which I command you this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Amen? Verse 7, The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten or defeated before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. This is what happens, friend, when God fights your battle. This is what happens when God takes over. And most of the time, we do not let Him. We make our own solution. And as a result, we fail. We fail to see His hand. Amen? There's another story here before I close with Pavel. I love the story when, when he went to go to the city and he wants to call home because he wants, he wants to find comfort. So he only had one quarter. <laughs> he was so poor. He only had one quarter. And this one quarter will avail him like five minutes talking over the phone. So he went there and he said, Lord, please bless this few minutes that I have with my family. I need his encouragement. So he went there. Drop his one quarter. And five minutes have gone by. Ten minutes, he was still on the phone. Thirty minutes, and he was still on the phone. An hour had gone by, he was still on the phone. Two hours have gone by, he was still on the phone. And finally, I don't know what time he ended, when he put back the phone receiver, cling, his coin came back. <laughs> The next, the next Sabbath, he went back again. And then he put his phone. Friends, he was calling his family for hours. And when he put the receiver, cling, <laughs> his phone came back. So, so many weeks that he has been doing this, every time he puts back the phone, after a long hours of talk, cling. <laughs> Friends, what do you do when you experience miracles? Share it, amen? amen? Miracles are there to prove to people that you have a living God. Amen. So he shared it with his, with his colleagues, with his fellow cadets, and his fellow cadets, now, you are just fooling us. And I said, if you want to, to witness, come with me. So one of his closest friends, cadet, went with him. And sure, they had separate boots. Okay, one, two, three. And they, they did it. And the other guy, sure enough, after five minutes, his phone call was cut off. And Pavel was there like 15 minutes, 20, 30 minutes. And the guy said, yeah, no, I get your point now. I get your point, but I know your secret. And Pavel said, what's my secret? You found a defective phone booth. I said, so let's, let's exchange phone booth. Friends, same thing. After five minutes, it's gone. And him, like 15, said, okay, okay, okay. Now I know your real reason and real secret. And Pavel said, what's my real secret? You have a special coin. <laughs> I said, okay, then let's exchange coin. They exchanged coin. Same thing happened. And his friend said, your God is really alive. Amen. And his last day, his last day, he went and gave a call to his parents. He said, it was a 45-minute call. And then at the end of the call, he put the receiver back. There's no coin that came out. Because he knew that he will not need it anymore. And he looked up. He just uttered two words. Thank you. Friends, don't we have an awesome God? Don't we have a faithful God? Look back on what he has done. He has never failed us. We have failed him numerous times, but he has never failed us. This is one thing I'd like to leave with you guys. While you are here, get as much 
as you can from this institution of what God is teaching each one of us. Make that strong foundation that you have right now, that when you go out, when you go in the real world, remember, God wants to be with you. Amen? Stand up. For them that honor me will I honor. Before I end this, I'd like to, to give you a simple illustration. And this illustration somehow really inspired me when I, when I saw this. It happened last, I think it was five years ago, when I witnessed this in, in Thailand. So I'd like to request my friend to give me this candle. Don't worry, it does not have to be lighted. <laughs> Friends, this is one good illustration about Sabbath. I'd like to ask, who is the light of the world? The light of the world is always shining, amen? You could never put him out. And this is Jesus, the light of the world. Every single day he is shining. But we could not somehow notice him because there's other lights taking away our attention. There's a light of assignments. <laughs> there's a light of, of chores, things that you need to do for your family. There's just a lot of things trying to get your attention. And all the while I thought, remember friends, my, my thinking of Sabbath before like, oh, I could not do the things that I want to do during regular days. I was feeling like I was limited during Sabbath. I did not really see the huge blessing and meaning of Sabbath until I begin to see Sabbath in God's, in God's perspective. And this is what happens during Sabbath, my dear friends. All other lights are put out. And when other lights are put out, you see him clearly. Friends, this is what happens during Sabbath. All other lights are put out. And all you get to see is Jesus. Amen? Amen? And friends, what happens? What happens when you see a light in a dark place? You go towards it. That's your cue. Come towards me. Come. <laughs> Come. Be careful. There we go. Cover. Okay. So, as you're coming towards the light, can you still see the light? Those people in the back. I remember when I was doing this in India, it was total darkness. And people were like, ow, 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 ow. They begin to stumble. And then I begin to realize the reason why they're stumbling because they could not see the light. Because the people who were ahead of them covered the light. And this one verse that somehow spoke to me in John 32 verse 12, it says, If I be lifted up, I will what? I will draw all men unto me. And then one thing that, that hit me, the reason why men are not drawn to God is because maybe we have not been really lifting Jesus up. Did you get this? We are standing so proud and so tall in Jesus that they could not see Jesus. All they could see is our back. Maybe we have been lifting up the ministry. Maybe we have been lifting up the church or the school but it's not Jesus. And sometimes we even forget that we've been lifting up other things. We've been lifting up the reform. We've been lifting up our accomplishments, but we are not lifting Jesus up. Friends, Jesus is the most attractive. Amen? Amen. And I'm thinking, Lord, how do we lift you up? Friends, is this the right way to lift Jesus up? I'm strong, but I'm not that strong. <laughs> no, I'm very weak. Friends, even if we all join hands together here of lifting Jesus up, we could not last. We could not last a day. And in the prayer ministry, I begin to realize that the only way to lift Jesus up is when you go down. Friends, when we go down, 
when we go down, Jesus is seen. Amen? If we want to lift Jesus higher, what should we do? We go lower. We humble ourselves before Him. The only way to lift Jesus up is when we go down as low as possible. That's why 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14, it says, If my people which are called by my name shall what? Humble themselves and pray. My dear friends, it is a promise. He will draw all men if he will be lifted up. Amen? If not much men are being pulled to Christ, it means to say we have not humbled ourselves before him. Friends, remember, God is a powerful God. Every promise that he said will come to pass. The fault is not with the promise. The fault is not with God. The fault is with us. We have not been meeting what he has been asking. Friends, it is time to lift Jesus up. Amen? It is time for people to see the real Jesus. We are not that attractive. Jesus is the most attractive. So as we have this short united prayer tonight, let us lift up our prayers to the Lord. Let's mingle it, a praise or thanksgiving, if it be a prayer request, if it be a confession. Let's lift it up, short prayers. Let's bow our heads.